In this lesson, we discuss the concept of maximum power transfer for steady state AC circuits and show how to compute the maximum average power a circuit can transmit to a load. We'll discuss the concept of maximum power transfer for steady state AC circuits. Let's start by thinking about a situation where we have a voltage source, V sub S, in series with a source impedance, v, uh, Z sub S, all operating at some particular frequency. And then we'd like to provide power to a load with an impedance Z sub L, which will induce a load voltage drop V sub L and a load current I sub L. The load current will be the source voltage divided by the series combination of the source and load impedances. And the load voltage will be the load current times the load impedance. Now from this load current and voltage, we can determine that the average power for the load will be one half the squared magnitude of the load current times the real part of the load impedance or the load resistance. Now, if we think of the source and load impedances in terms of their resistances and reactances, we can expand the average power for the load in terms of those quantities. Here, the magnitude squared for the load current is the squared magnitude for the source voltage divided by the squared magnitude for the sum of the source and load impedances, which is the sum of the square of the real part, which is their resistances, plus the sum of the square of the imaginary part, which is their reactances. And the real part of the load impedance is simply the load resistance. Now to maximize the average power at the load, we'd like to pick the load impedance, or equivalently, the load resistance and the load reactance, so that this expression for P sub L, the average power at the load, is as large as possible. The load reactance only shows up in the denominator, and because the sum of the source and load reactances are squared after being summed, that term can only make the power smaller than it would be if x sub s plus x sub l was zero. Therefore, we'd like to pick the load reactance to make this term equal to zero, which means we want the load reactance to be the negative of the source reactance. And if we do that, we'll have an expression that only depends on the load resistance. If we make the load resistance zero, then the power, average power, will be zero. If we make the load resistance very large, the average power will be zero. Somewhere in between, there is a maximum, and by differentiating the average power with respect to the load resistance and setting that derivative equal to zero, we can show that the average power for the load is maximized when the load resistance is equal to the source resistance. This means that we want to set the load impedance to the complex conjugate of the source impedance, and when we do that, the load power will look like this, which we can simplify to the squared magnitude of the source voltage divided by 8 times the source resistance. These, then, are the expressions for the load that maximizes the power transfer and the average power that that load will get. As an example, let's consider a circuit with an AC voltage source, one resistor, one inductor, and one capacitor that are connected like this. And then let's determine the load impedance that will maximize the power transferred to it. To do that, we'll convert this circuit to its Thevenin equivalent voltage and impedance. Now for the equivalent impedance, we'll turn off the source and determine the equivalent impedance for the three elements. And because they are all in parallel relative to the load terminals, we can use the rule for combining elements in parallel to evaluate the equivalent impedance after, of course, we use the operating frequency to convert each element to its corresponding impedance. Next, we'll determine the Thevenin voltage by evaluating the open circuit voltage at the load terminals. To do that, we can combine the inductor and capacitor in parallel and then use the voltage divider rule to find the voltage VOC.
Then once we have both the equivalent impedance and the voltage, the open circuit voltage or the Thevenin voltage for the circuit, we can replace it with the Thevenin source in series with the Thevenin equivalent impedance. Then the load impedance that maximizes the power transfer can be determined as the complex conjugate of the equivalent impedance. And the power that will be transferred is the magnitude squared of the Thevenin voltage divided by 8 times the resistance associated with the equivalent impedance. As an example, suppose the circuit element values are such that the resistance is 78 ohms, the inductance is 85 millihenries, the capacitance is 75 microfarads. The source voltage is 13 volts at a phase of 107 degrees, and the operating frequency is 218 hertz. In this case, the load that would maximize power transfer would have 1.4203 plus J times 10. 0.4289 ohms. That is, the resistance would be 1.4203 ohms, and the reactance would be 10.4289 ohms. The average power associated with that would be 0 0.2708 watts. Now, to test yourself, you should take the time to verify that you get these same values 